so an LVAD, which stands for left ventricular assist device, is a small, uh, completely implantable mechanical blood pump, which uh, we surgically implant just at the very bottom part of the patient's left chest. Uh, it connects to um, the heart, the apex of the left ventricle, which is the main pumping chamber of the heart. It helps pull the blood out of that chamber, and then the pump pumps the blood into the aorta. So it more or less uh, bypasses or assists the left ventricle in terms of its ability to pump blood. This uh, particular device is the newest uh, presently available FDA approved device both for uh, use as a bridge to transplant and as we say destination therapy. So even though it's most commonly used as a bridge to transplant, it is now FDA approved to use as, as we say, standalone therapy. So for folks who for whatever reason may not be eligible to, to have a heart transplant due to other medical illnesses, um, this device can be used to treat their end-stage heart failure. The most dramatic to me are the folks who really uh, barely make it to the hospital alive because of their heart failure and they have all, they're hooked up to, you know, seemingly a million IVs with all the strong medicines, um, um, other temporary uh, circulatory assist devices, balloon pumps, things like this, and, and they're barely alive. And we put the device in and to see them recover and within uh, several days to a few weeks see them walking down the hall, it's amazing. Uh, some of the more, uh, uh, some of the other examples are you know, people who used to enjoy um, going to sporting events, but they couldn't, and now they're able to do that again. Uh, a young gal uh, was recently speaking to her mother, and um, she likes to dance, and she wasn't dancing. Now she, they, last weekend, she went out dancing. So uh, uh, just all kinds of stories like that, just people uh, getting back to their regular life. We saw a fellow back in clinic last week who hadn't been working in, in the last few years because of his heart failure, and he feels well enough. Uh, so good at home that uh, uh, his wife realizes it's time for him to go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> this device is uh, very small, and that's the main improvement. It uh, uh, it it we it, it allows us to implant uh, this device into a wide range of individuals. The previous device we were using was quite large, and um, for smaller individuals, uh, smaller men, smaller women. Uh, teenagers, it, the, the device was too big. So with this new device, it's so small that there's almost uh, there's almost no one we can't put it in. Because uh, the device is small, the uh, surgical procedure to put it in is is although it's still a major operation, it is uh, the operation is quicker than historically what we've had to do with the previous device. Um, shorter operation sometimes means a, a less surgical trauma and the recovery just seems uh, so much quicker. In addition, the, the, the pump, the device, seems very efficient in its ability to pump blood to the body, support the blood pressure, and for almost unknown reasons, uh, patients just feel so good. The device can stay in the body, uh, we don't know how long, almost indefinitely. It was uh, designed uh, to perhaps, based on the mechanical properties of the device, it was designed to last perhaps two to five years. Uh, mostly being used, as we say, as a bridge to a transplant. So for folks with heart failure who are looking at uh, a, a transplant as their ultimate treatment, um, but transplants are not readily available, the left ventricular assist device was used to hold them over or keep them well enough until a heart transplant became available. Well, it turns out the device uh, works so well, and two years would go by, and then three and four, and the device is still working fine that it became obvious that it was probably a more durable device than just a couple of years. And even though it's not the perfect therapy, uh, it is a, uh, um, it's a device that has to be implanted into the body. Uh, the, the main downside is the drive line, which obviously has to exit the body, so there is the, the long-term risk of infection. Uh, so, and there is the need for blood thinners. So there are some things about it that are not quite perfect but it's so much further along than what we had before. And given the fact that there are um, five to six million patients in, in America with heart failure and 600 to 700,000 new cases diagnosed a year and only two to 3,000 heart transplants a year, there's a huge gap and a, and a huge unmet need. And uh, 
this uh, this therapy, this device really gives him hope.